Chapter 1. Half a Person She's beautiful. She stands behind two other girls, one a goth coated in black, and the other a blonde with wild hair and an even wilder smile. She's waiting, looking off the other way, but I've already memorized her face. I've never seen such a gorgeous girl in my life. You really like them? The goth girl is the one talking. Maybe she's the leader of their pack. I've noticed them twice already today because of her, the one standing behind. The beautiful girl from my second period English class, the one with the short skirt and long legs and endless brown hair, the one I can't stop thinking about. She's hard not to notice. Yeah, they're one of my favorites, I say. We're talking about my t-shirt. It's my first day at this school, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't think carefully about what I was going to wear. It's about making a statement. I would have bet that 99% of the 700 kids at this high school wouldn't know what strange ways here we come refers to. Guess I found the other 1%. I was killing time after lunch by wandering aimlessly when the threesome stopped me. Goth girl didn't even say hi. She just pointed at the murky photograph of a face on my shirt and asked where I got it. She made it sound like I stole it. In a way, I did. You're not from around here, are you? Goth girl asks. Her sparkling blue eyes are almost hidden by her dark eyeliner. Did the shirt give it away? Nobody in this school listens to the Smiths. I can tell her that I stole the shirt, or in a sense borrowed it, but then she'd ask me from where. I don't want to tell her I found it in a drawer in the house we're staying at. A cabin that belongs to my uncle. A cabin that used to belong to my uncle when he was around. I just moved here from a suburb of Chicago. What suburb? the blonde asks. Libertyville. Ever hear of it? No. I see the beauty shift her gaze around to see who's watching, which is surprising because most attractive girls don't have to do that. They know that they're being watched. This is different. Her glance is more suspicious or anxious. What's your name? Chris Buckley. Good taste in music, Chris, goth girl says. I'm Poe. This is Rachel, and she's Jocelyn. That's right. Her name's Jocelyn. I remember now from class. What else do you like? I got a wide taste in music. Do you like country? Poe asks. No, not really. Good. I can't stand it. Nobody who wears a t-shirt like that would ever like country. I like country. Rachel says. Don't admit it. So why'd you move here? Parents got a divorce. My mom decided to move, and I came with her. Did you have a choice? Not really. But if I had, I would have chosen to move with her. Why here? Some of our family lives in solitary, or used to. I have a couple relatives in the area. I choose not to say anything about Uncle Robert. My mother grew up around here. That sucks, Poe says. Solitary is a strange town, Rachel says with a grin that doesn't seem to ever go away. Anybody tell you that? I shake my head. Joss lives here. We don't, Poe says. I'm in Groveton. Rach lives on the border to South Carolina. Joss tries to hide out at our places because solitary fits its name. Jocelyn looks like she's late for something, her body language screaming that she wants to leave this conversation she's not a part of. She still hasn't acknowledged me. What year are you guys? Juniors. I'm from New York, can't you tell? Rachel is from Colorado, and Jocelyn grew up here, though she wants to get out as soon as she can. You can join our club if you like. 
part of me wonders if I'd have to wear eyeliner and lipstick. Club? The misfits, the outcasts, whatever you want to call it. Not sure if I want to join that. You think you fit in? No, I say. Good, we'll take you. You fit with us. Plus, you're cute. Poe and her friends walk away. Jocelyn finally glances at me and smiles the saddest smile I've ever seen. <laughs>